Okay, welcome to today's uh, final session in terms of our education series. Um, before we get going here, let's just, uh, as always, familiarize ourselves with um, the disclaimer in terms of risk. And um, as we all know by now, the foreign exchange training any financial instrument um, carries with it a, a high degree of risk. As such, we, uh, we're looking to mitigate some of that risk by participating in the, um, in the education series. And, uh, and hopefully that will um, equip us better when we uh, move into trading live market conditions. So just uh, before we get going here, I'll, uh, I'll briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Patrick Munley. I'm a fund manager, uh, trading mentor, and um, a market commentator. I haven't always been involved in the markets. Uh, after I graduated, uh, joined a consulting firm and left, and eventually did a, a startup with, um, with with some uh, some fellow employees from the consulting business. And uh, that experienced some pretty rapid growth. After about four or five years, I cashed in my stake in the in the business and um, I moved on to explore my passion for markets. Uh, as is often the case, I started trading uh, the e-mini S&P futures, had some uh, early beginner's luck, experienced some growth and then some significant growth and then ultimately, I, uh, as, is often, as is also often the case, I, uh, I gave back the gains and then some. And after taking a, a pretty significant loss, I decided I had to revisit how I was going to, uh, to approach the markets and if I was going to seriously commit to, to trading as a, a commercial endeavor. And so I sought out a mentor and um, developed a trade plan and back tested that and forward tested it and then uh, took that plan to, to market in 2008. And um, it's fairly similar trading conditions to what we're experiencing at the moment, but ultimately navigated my way through 2008, 2009. And since 2008, I've been consistently profitable on an annual basis. Um, and that's really how I measure my performance. I'm not in concerned about the outcomes of individual trades or even uh, a series of trades. What I'm interested in is, is the, uh, an extended series of outcomes demonstrating my, my trading edge. Since 2010, I've um, privately mentored trainers of all experience levels from complete novices to former um, floor traders at the CME. I have, uh, since 2013, been managing external investor capital. And like I say, um, delivered consistent annual profitable returns. Um, I'm obviously current market resident, uh, current market expert in residence at uh, Ticknell. And I'm also the head of trading and trader education for a, uh, an online um, trading education brand called FX Career Swap, um, whereby we, uh, we take retail trading talent and develop their skills and then give them uh, funded trading accounts. So that brings you up to, to speed with, uh, with who I am and, and the context in which I'm, I'm presenting today. So what I basically want to do, as, as, we, um, as there was a, an issue with, with last week's, um, we had a technical issue last week, I just want to very quickly run through um, and recap what we were discussing in terms of the pin bar. And as we know, the pin bar um, highlights to, to us a, a potential for a market reversal. Um, and that can be a reversal against the trend or with the trend. Today, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit the, the DNA of the pin bar, and then I'm ultimately going to move forward to discuss the, uh, the pin bar reversal combined with um, a di divergence, and I'll, I'll walk you through what divergence is. And then I'll also, um, I'll also give you the heads up in terms of uh, the pin bar used as a continuation entry. And certainly in the current volatility, there have been a number of uh, decent pin bar continuation setups, and I'll, I'll walk you through some of those on live charts uh, in the section. Uh, the pin bar, we know they're looking for an extended tail and um, a smaller body. Uh, we know that in terms of trading the pin bar, we want to, to ideally, um, or, in, or the, the, the standard approach to trading the pin bar is to, to enter on, um, on the breach of the pin bar in terms of the direction in which the pin bar is pointing. 
and he stops just above the high or the low of the pin bar. What's important to us in terms of the pin bar is that we effectively identify the DNA of the more high probability pin bars. So what we're always looking to do as traders, we know that regardless of whatever strategy we decide to trade or how we intend to, to approach the markets, we, um, we're we looking to stack the probabilities in our favor. We know that our strategy um, is not going to deliver winning trade after trade after trade, but what we're looking for is over time to build a high probability case for entering entering the markets. And when I say high probability, I mean a set of circumstances that indicate one outcome is more likely than another. Okay, and so the pin bar um, suggests to us the potential for reversal. And as you can see on the screen there, we have two types of pin bars that we're looking for, really. We certainly want a bar that closes within inside the range of the prior day's bar, okay? Equally, we would also take a candle that closes above the range of the prior day's candle. This is specifically really when we're looking at reversals. Right? I'll, I'll walk you through the continuation setup. Um, um, when we get a pin bar, you see a, a third example there that closes below the prior day's range, and that doesn't really indicate a strong uh, sense of sentiment in terms of uh, reversal. So we're going to uh, we're going to be looking through some live live chart examples shortly. Again, here you can see this idea of the, the long tail, long tail demonstrating to us that there's a liquidity issue um, in this instance uh, at lower prices. That there's we what the, as the selling has basically come up against overwhelming demand in the market, and that's ultimately driven prices back up. And then we've closed within the prior candles range, suggesting the potential for reversal. In this instance, we're seeing prices move higher, price extends higher, the buyers meet overwhelming selling pressure, and we close back within the range, and we see a reversal. Um, the pin bar continuation that we're going to talk about shortly. Is, is a way of using the pin bar to align ourselves with an existing trend. So mo most people, the, the challenge that they face with the pin bar is that once once they become familiar with it, they think it's uh, it's the, the the cash cow, so to speak, that is just um, permanently going to to pay out, and that um, that, as we know, just simply isn't the case. So what we're looking to do as as traders in terms of stacking probabilities in our favor is we're looking to identify high probability locations for taking advantage of the pin bar. Um, in this instance here you can see we get a number of continuation setups but we're trading ultimately too close to resistance um, within the market for these pin bars to really uh, really to, to take things forward. So what we're ideally looking for in terms of reversals are candles that um, the, the, the tail of the candle or the nose to re reference to the Pinocchio Candle um, is is extended above the price, suggesting the potential for um, for reversal or exhaustion with the prior move. In this instance here, you can see that we had a pin bar in terms of a, a continuation that didn't really stick out as sorts and was kind of again. If you look at that chart, you can see those those three or four candles are, are relatively tightly bunched, and you can see where the resistance is and it's going to be difficult for price to move through there in a meaningful fashion. And what we're looking to do is, um, is apply some of the other tools that I've talked about our systems to give us a, um, a higher probability scenario. What we're going to do now is we're going to move away from um, the pin bar in terms of uh, the standard pin bar, how we use it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the pin bar with some of the other um, trading tools that I've, I've introduced you to over the past 12 weeks. And as most of you will know, um, one of the, the tools I use is, um, is the pin bar trader, which identifies the pin bars. Let's just let's see what's going on with the settings here and make sure they're correct. Give me one second, guys. Um, what we're looking to do is identify, and this is a, 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 an indicator, you can go back over the last video, I don't, I'm not going to walk you through exactly how it works again, but it, basically it's a colour-coded indicator that identifies the range 
a minimum of 1.75 uh, the, the tail to the body. So again, just giving me a better idea of the exhaust. The volatility bands give me a statistical, uh, mathematical uh, based um, probability edge in terms of when price tests these bands, if it's ab above or below, um, they have a, a, a high probability of causing at least a pause in the price action and more often than not a correction or a reversal so when price test these and we get a, a pin bar signal then i pay attention okay now that's the standard setup as we discussed last week what i'm what, what we're going to talk about shortly is is divergence now for me i use a a, a proprietary tool called the psi indicator um, again, uh, this, you know, there, uh, these are the tools that I, I've had developed for my needs um, of, you know, over an extended period of time in the market. So I want to make things as easy as possible for myself as I can. So I like things to be color coded for me. Um, and also uh, I saw uh, the potential for some enhancements. So essentially what you've got here is an enhanced version of the, the um, rel relative strength index, the RSI. Um, I refer to it as site because I use it slightly differently. In this color, color coded section, um, once we pass through the, the zero line here and that the site um, flips to green, then that's considered to be a bullish market condition. Um, it's bullish because what tends to happen at that stage, that's when the majority of retail traders are actually looking to sell the market. So if it's red, it's bearish, if it's green, it's bullish. Now, the only time that I would trade against the trend as defined by the psych indicator is where we have something called divergence. Now, what is divergence? Divergence essentially means that when price makes a low, and the, the let me get rid of the, uh, the RSI stuff. One second, guys. Let's be clear now. <clears throat> so when price makes a swing low here, we test down into um, the volatility support bands, and we get a swing low in terms of uh, in terms of the psych indicator here. Price then moves higher, and we get back to the central tendency. You'll remember from um, the week before, we talked about the central tendency in terms of the volatility. Measured over a twenty period look. Okay, so we'll test up to the, the 20 the average price over the past 20 days here. Then, then low, we move back to retest the volatility support band. And as we test through, we actually pierce the lower volatility support band. So that's a three stand deviation away from, uh, away from the mean. We know that in that three standard deviation move, we have uh, about a 90% chance of witnessing a reversal of sorts. And in this instance, we get the reversal and a pin bar indicator highlights that the, reverse, the, the reversal candle is actually a pin bar. So we've got a couple of things developing here now. We've got the pin bar reversal. And as we've made this new low in price, the new low in price is not confirmed by an, by an equal low in the psych indicator. So what, what's the information that we're getting from that? Well, from a sentiment perspective, what it's telling us is that the support that we saw into this low in price is not being matched on this new low. So the rate of change in terms of how quickly prices were moving and how quickly the ticks were occurring down into this low here was significantly different to the last low. <coughs> Excuse me. And in that difference, we know divergence, okay? So again, divergence simply means that on any swing low or swing high, we'll look at some examples of swing highs in a minute, but as price makes the low, and for me, what I, I, what I like to use for these lows or these swing points is certainly the volatility bands, because we know that when we test those volatility bands, we're making, uh, we're testing a, a standard deviation move away from the mean. So it has some statistical significance. So we get the swing low, get the low in terms of our um, psych indicator, consolidate, test the central tendency, move down into a new low. This low experiences a liquidity issue because as we trade down into these lower prices, the sellers are overwhelmed by that. Okay. 
exhaustion. And what we found that there wasn't the same momentum or sentiment support for lower prices as well, as confirmed by the divergence here. So on the price low here, we were this level, on this price low, we're ticking up towards the indicator actually turning bullish. So what happens? Well, if we're trading this strategy, we would be entering a long position at the close of the candle or one tick above the high, whichever way you want to trade it. We have a predefined stop as per, um, as per the indicator. And then our first objective is to get to one times our risk. Because so once we get to one times our risk, we take our risk off the table and then we have a risk-free trade and ultimately we're looking for two times our risk. And the indicator maps these levels out for us um, automatically. And what happens? Well, let's, let's walk it forward. We get a, a, a move through the highs. So even if you were trading this at the close or you were looking to be um, pulled into the trade with, a, with a, a buy stop, one pip above the high of the candle, either way, you're in the trade, okay? And what happens next? Well, we consolidate, we track a bit lower, test back into the volatility bands, but what's happening from a, uh, a sentiment perspective is this market is now turning increasingly bullish, okay? Um, the, the consolidation is then taken out by a bullish outside reversal, which is it has additional conviction to this trade now because we have got this uh, psych indicator really starting to tick up into the into the buy zone and then what happens well we run up we get a risk-free trade here and then ultimately we trade higher and up into our two times risk reward so the thing we've got the couple of things that we want to note here is that we have this divergence signal we had the pin bar reversal we tested into the volatility bands we've actually exceeded the three standard deviation which has mathematical significance. And then finally, we got our, our price trigger. Does that make sense to everyone? Can you get a Y in the chat box if you're, uh, if you're following along here? And uh, that makes sense in terms of divergence. Good stuff. Okay, let's look at, uh, let's look at another example. Here we have the, uh, the dollar Swiss. Again, I'll just uh, get rid of this. This makes it easier for you guys to see here. So price moves down. We, uh, we test in and around the two, three standard deviation. We had a reversal up into the two to three standard deviation resistance area. And price pulls back down, retest these problems. Okay. So what we've got here is if we think back to the, the patterns that we covered we've got a potential double bottom scenario certainly on a closing basis so we've got a double bottom we're testing now into that two to three standard deviation support zone but most importantly here look at the divergence we're seeing so as we broke lower this indicator the the psych indicator had almost flipped bullish at that stage and certainly did by the next candle. So from a trading perspective, we get a, we've got our setup here. We've got a do potential double bottom with significant divergence. Like so. So we enter either at the close or we put a, a buy stop, one pip above the, um, the high of the candle and we're triggered into the trade. The high is bullish. So we're getting that extra conviction that, uh, that this, this buy signal is, is valid. And then price moves up to test our one times our risk. So we take our risk off the table at that point, we move our stops to our entry, and we watch to see if price can trade up for two times risk. And again, fortunately in this instance, it does. I mean, these setups here as, you know, that, that are obviously working out. But again, I do stress, and, and this is incredibly important, um, that, you know, you can, you, even when we stack all the probabilities in our favor and we've adhered to our trading plan and our trading rules, we're still going to experience losing trades. And anyone who tells you anything different is, is, is lying to you and themselves. Um, but if you look at how we're using this tool, this, this, um, the combination of these tools, you'll note that our winning trades are two times the size of our losing trades. So that means we, could, we only have to win four out of 10 trades to be really profitable. 
okay? So let's, uh, let's take a look at another example here. We have the Australian dollar. This is a trade that I, I took last year and shared with, uh, with clients uh, through the Tickmill blog. So again, we've got this double bottom scenario developing. Price moves down, test two, three standard deviation consolidates. Again, test two, three standard deviation support and pops higher into the resistance area. No, we get a pin bar reversal here. Well, we get a bunch of them, all of which would have, would have been profitable in terms of just trading that pin bar reversal scenario. You remember last week, one of the important things I, I, I highlighted to you guys about um, the pin bar reversal is this idea of trading it most effectively with uh, the higher term, the higher time frame volume weight average price. In this instance, obviously, it's the 100 period which represents uh, the monthly position of the VWAP. So, once we get, uh, once we got the, the, the pin bar signal here, we have that additional confirmation of the monthly VWAP being um, bearish, and then the short-term flow also being bearish. So this that sets up in terms of just playing a vanilla um, bar reversal. For purposes of obviously, what we're looking at is increasing um, the probabilities by using um, divergence. So let's look at the divergence up and we trade it back down into the support zone. In this instance, we just took out those prior swing lows. And again, ostensibly formed a double bottom here, but the double bottom has additional conviction because you can see how sentiment or momentum failed to support or failed to confirm the potential for lower prices. Okay, so we got down here, we got our pin reversal as per the indicator, got our, I, I diver, uh, sorry, <coughs> we got our divergence confirmation, we also got the RSI stochastic positively diverging to the upside. So we have a bunch of bunch of confluence here that suggests it's worth us risking to find out if this pin bar is going to play out. So we enter at the close or one pip above the high, we automatically know where our stops being placed, trade up into uh, one times our risk reward. So we'd be I, from there I would take my risk off the table. And again, this is important because. We're not, always, we're not always going to have winning trades. We're not always necessarily going to have a losing trade. In this instance, I would have been stopped out of this trade break even because I would imagine, uh, well, if I had traded the close of the candle, I probably would have just survived. But if I traded one pip above the high, um, then I would have been taken out. And the trade off went on to, to reach the It chopped around, and you know, that's uh, it's a frustrating period. But ultimately, the trade played out um, from a technical perspective. But I can tell you a real world example, walking to some others um, in shortly, that, that I've been taken out of that trade at, at break even. And this idea of, of, of a break even is simply um, a loss mitigation strategy. So once a trade moves one time in my risk, I consider it to be bad business, really, to let that trade come back and then stop me out. Uh, for a full loss. So that's why I, um, I, I, once with the traders, once I've got the validation that the market has confirmed the signal and it's moved one, one time my risk in favor, then that's good enough for me. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we have here. Here's the pound. We move down, test the volatility. Um, Support bands, consolidate, make a push, uh, uh, and come back into volatility resistance bands and roll uh, make new lows. But by this stage, you can see that the SAC indicator has now flipped bullish. And so, from a sentiment and momentum perspective, lower prices aren't being supported. We're getting additional confirmation from our pin bar indicator, and we've got the divergence positive divergence in terms of the RSI stochastic. So this all stacks up. So we're going to take a trade here, one pip above the high or at the close. We know where our stop is. Trade moves up quickly the following day into uh, one times our risk reward. 
So again, take our risk off the table, stops to entry, and it's either going to be a break even or two times risk reward. And we consolidate in the coming days, but ultimately trade up into that two times risk reward. So if we look at one more here, this is the Singapore dollar. And in this instance, we move up into uh, volatility resistance. We don't get the test of volatility resistance there, but we're, we're starting to see some initial signs of exhaustion with that, uh, that tail there suggesting there's a liquidity issue here as we're moving higher. And then ultimately, we get that move into the two to three standard deviation, potential double top, where we've just run the stops at the high, and then bang, overwhelming selling pressure, prices down to close as a pin bar as per the indicator. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to see where the psych is positioned. And you can see significant divergence there versus these prior peaks. And so again, just follow the plan, put uh, our entry one pip below the low or at the close, we have our stop automatically defined. Price quickly moves into one times our risk rewards to take our risk off the table and it's either break even or two times risk reward, and that's what we get. So that's how we use divergence to do conviction to these uh, these cell the, these pin bar setups. So not only are we thinking about location, um, using the statistical edge of the volatility, um, the volatility bands. Further to that, we are also now using sentiment and momentum to highlight when there is a shift in the market. So prices may be um, continuing in one direction, but by using this divergence method, we're able to identify a shift in the market participants in their uh, support of the uh, support of these prices. Okay. How clear in terms of divergence? A why in the chat box if that's making sense, and then we'll uh, I'll take a quick sip of water and we'll move on to look at uh, finally the pin bar continuation. Okay, so now we're going to think about um, the pin bar continuation setup. And again, for this, I am using um, some of the other tools here. Specifically, what I like to, to use is the RSI stochastic, um, the divergence, positive or negative, to support the direction, current direction of trade. I'm also obviously using my long term volume waste average price, my near term volume waste average price. This is all color coded, obviously. So when I get when price closes below the five period volume waste average price, the candle, whether or not it closed up or down on the day, is going to be painted red for me. And why do I do this? Well, it just helps me easily identify um, trending conditions and the near term trend within the market. Because again, we're thinking about money flow. Um, and in terms of the, the near term volume waste average price, what it's telling us is that when these candles close red, over the past five days, there have been more down ticks than there have been up ticks. So what, what, what can we glean from that? Well, what we can glean from that is that the money flow in the market is orientated on the sell side than it is on the buy side. And as I've suggested all along, to you guys is that what we're looking to do as traders is essentially align ourselves with the players market who are dictating that money. And this is a, a simple method to help align ourselves um, with that, that price action. Once again, we can use the site tool as well to add conviction to our trade. We know that when it's red, that indicates that we're in a bearish market condition. So we've got we've got four confirmations here, and then finally what we've got is we've got our pin bar tool, okay? So what we're looking for in terms of this trade setup, in terms of the pin bar continuation, is we want to see that the RSI stochastic has tested the 80 level, which suggests overbought conditions. We want to see a red candle a bearish pin bar as denoted here by the red dot so where we get this red dot if 
that red dot is confirmed by prices being below the near-term volume waste average price. That, and we have the RSI stochastic coming from this 80 level and the lines diverging negatively. Additional confirmation with cycle also being read. What we're being told here is that the money flow in the market is bearish. Now, this pin bar is unlikely to attract much attention because if we think about pin bar reversals, which is what most people are, are looking to play, then this isn't going to attract much attention. And so it allows us to join the trend at a market where, where the trade entry is going to be less crowded. Again, if you think about the, the dynamics of the market, we want to try and avoid congestion and overcrowded areas and areas where every every trader on the planet is looking at. So this is a, a almost a camouflage entry into this bear, developing bearish trend. So we've broken to the downside, we've consolidated, RSI stochastic's got back up above 80, and then we get this little pin bar here. We enter at the close, stop already highlighted for us, one times risk, boom, and then we get that second push down into two times our risk. So you can see here this setup had a bunch of things going for it. Had a negative monthly VWAP, negative near-term VWAP, RSI stochastic negatively diverged, and the psych indicator suggesting bearish market conditions. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's look at another one. Here we have the Aussie yen. Similar scenario, broke to the downside, price consolidated, Monthly VWAP has just flipped bearish, suggesting the higher time frame trend now is moving to the downside. RSI stochastic rolling over from above 80 period, negatively diverged, like bearish, and we get a red dot, bearish pin bar, all the reds enter at the close, price wicks down, we get to one times our risk and then ultimately two times our risk reward. Okay, so look, here was a Euro setup that, uh, that I issued last week uh, to the guys in our, our pro trades uh, chat room. So we had uh, the Euro moving to the upside. Now, in terms of technical scoring, what I'm looking for when I'm, I'm taking these trades is about seven, 70 to 80% in terms of an ideal trade. You know, these 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 two that we we looked at here uh, had everything going for them. These were percent uh, in terms of technical scoring. All four criteria were met. Um, now in the euro here, because we've got that longer term volume on average price, but we've got a big bearish reversal pattern here. We've certainly got some divergence as per prior swings. And we get that bearish pin bar confirmed with uh, the RSI stochastic coming from significantly overbought levels. Okay, so for me, this ticks enough of the boxes to put a trade on. <coughs> now, again, important to, to, to clarify here because this again looks like a great trade, looks like a winner. The reality of this trade was because of the price action on the day, the ECB uh, announcement was was on this day. Prices whipped around. I actually got taken out of the trade uh, for break even. It, it's obviously gone on to be a great winner and we're trading lower today. But here's an example of where <coughs> the analysis and the strategy prove themselves, but the actual reality of trading that candle and that type of price action on that specific day with a huge amount of headline risk means that you know it was it, ultimately it was a risk, it was a break free exit. Uh, break free, sorry, break even trade. But for me, as a, as a leader, what I take uh, what I take from this is it shows the strategy working. So what I'm always looking to do is build conviction in the efficacy of the strategy. And so strategy works. The intraday dynamics of, of putting that trade on and managing meant that it was uh, was ultimately a risk uh, a risk free exit. Okay, so again, I just just to hammer home this idea that what obviously what I want to show you today in the limited amount of time we have are how the setup works and it working. But again, I strongly, strongly, strongly reiterate, you know, this is not, you know, this is not a, a, everyone's a winner. 
because that is just not the reality of trading. Okay, and what the what this does show, and and this is the real takeaway from these examples, is that if if trading correctly and executed correctly, that the winners will be two times losses. So again, you only have to win four out of every ten trades for this to be a profitable strategy. Kiwi Swiss, next example. So price declining into two three standard deviation. What do we know there? Well, we're likely to have some sort of pause or potential correction. And we get that long term volume waste average price is bearish. Okay. Now, this is important here because you can see we actually, it looks like we have a signal here. We've got that red dot, bearish monthly VWAP, bearish near term volume waste average price. So, why wouldn't we take that trade? Well, one of the major factors for passing on that trade is that one of the key components for, for this trade to work is the idea that the RSI stochastic has tested up into the overbought condition. And it hadn't done by that stage. By the time we had this, we were we were here, so we were testing it, but we hadn't seen we hadn't seen the rollover. We hadn't seen that negative divergence. Okay. So this this will just suggest that this was a premature signal. No matter then if we waited and, and what we wanted to do, obviously, the key to, to success in trading is patience and discipline. So we wait for the, the, the signal as per rules, that negative divergence, RSI stochastic negatively diverged, psych, bearish, bearish VWAP on the monthly time frame, bearish VWAP on the daily time frame, and then we get our pin bar signal as well, the red dot here, and uh, trade works. Okay, it delivers two times risk reward. Let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at another one here. We have the switch. This is uh, recent data. Just some more. This is one again last week. And again, this this trade goes to the the, the, uh, the take profit area. And let me um, show you. And the, again, this is another, uh, the, you know, this is just being absolutely transparent. So when we got this, um, when we got this signal, um, on the day that we, on the day we got the setter, the dollar was making a really strong, uh, strong upside move and looked like. Uh, especially from the news wires uh, that you know we were seeing some some sort of dollar funding squeeze. So when I got this signal, I took the trade. We uh, we got a, a bullish reversal. We, we have sorry the RSI stochastic had obviously positively um, di uh, positively diverged at this stage. I haven't got it on here because uh, we, I'm showing you a different example. But this was the signal anyway. We had this bullish outside bar. In the bar nice role here in terms of the vo uh, near-term volume wasted average price and I got the signal I took and what I did in this instance because I saw the potential for, for higher prices for this dollar squeeze to play out in terms of the panic phase of markets we're in I took the take profit off the table okay so I, I, I took my take profit target off it, it traded up to there within the within that day so I could have got that two times risk reward the reason why I did that in this instance was I saw the potential for a, a more significant trend to emerge and there are instances and certainly um, with my level of experience in the market where you can identify a shift in conditions that offer the opportunity for you to maybe get five times or seven times or even ten times risk reward trade which significantly boosts returns over the year now what we got in this instance was I was right in my thinking so I, I you know I, was, I, 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 I made the right move versus my trading plan. So I, my trade got to risk free and, uh, and we moved higher. And then on um, Monday, we got this pullback. And this pullback here took me out of the trade breaking. Okay. And then lo and behold, look what's happening. We're surging higher again. Uh, and the, you know, the way I thought the market would play out is occurring, but I'm not in that trade at the moment. 
So again, if I just if I just wanted to impress you with all these signals that work out and how great it is, I could you know I have to tell you I could just say yeah, I'm, I'm in this and it's going to be a huge. This is I want to give you the actual brutalities of trading. There are you know there are many many times it just works. You know the transactional two to one risk reward trade just pays out and it is profitable and proven profitable to me over the past 15 years. There are instances where you see an opportunity <coughs> that can deliver. Um, multiples of risk and I saw one and I, I decided to take it but the reality is this pullback here took me out of the trade uh, break, uh, break even and then lo and behold look what I'm watching now this thing is taking off. Again that, I, I, I don't, uh, that, that doesn't um, discourage me or dishearten me, I'm losing my mind over the fact that I got taken out and it's now going off in, in the direction I anticipated. I take Apart from the fact I, I mapped the market, I read the conditions correctly. Unfortunately, in this instance, you know, I, I'm, I'm not participating in the trade, but there is value in the experience for me, even if it's not necessarily uh, immediate profit in my accounts. But this is the reality of trading, and this brings me uh, to the to the, the final point, really. Um, as of Thursday at 12:30 UK time. I'm going to be hosting a live market analysis session whereby I'm going to be identifying um, setups in the market that I'm going to be looking to trade. I'm going to then review trades that I've taken and, um, and I'm going to give you my take on current market conditions and the potential uh, market themes and dynamics and narratives that are developing and where I see um, the opportunities in the market. And each you're going to get to see me um, practically apply the strategies and techniques that we've covered over the past 12 weeks and you'll get a front row seat to see how a professional trader navigates what are uh, you know pretty tricky uh, pretty tricky market conditions at the moment with these with this dislocation that we're seeing in terms of the markets the opportunity over the next 6 12 and 24 months is significant if you know how, if you've got a plan, if you've traded through conditions like that, um, then you will know that this uptick in volatility and this dislocation in markets precedes fantastic trading environments. And so, what I'm going to show you over the coming weeks and months is how I am going to look to, to capitalize on that. And, um, and you'll, you'll get a warts and all, you know, you'll see the trades that don't work out, and then you'll see the trades that work out, and you'll see conditions like this where. I called it right, but um, but due to the, the volatility and price action, I just got uh, taken out of the trade. So I hope you'll join me um, Thursdays 12:30 uh, over the coming months, and uh, and I'll try and walk you guys through what I'm what I'm seeing and where I see opportunity for uh, for trades. Other questions? Because I'm actually just going to post the link for you to register um, for those sessions in the chat box. You should see the Una question. Um, with the um, my technical my technicals are off the chart. Setup's not forming. Yeah, well, what I would suggest to you, Aruna, I don't know the time frame you're trading. What I tend to, you know, I mean, my most of my trading is done on the daily time frame. I execute some of the signals I get on the daily time frame um, on an intraday chart, maybe an hourly or four hour chart, but more often than not. Yeah, so I mean, the, the daily chart, there is what you're seeing at the moment is a dislocation, and the dislocation creates a requirement in, for, for participants, you know, big, big money, not, not uh, you know, not the guys, um, not retail traders, but, you know, significant financial entities. We'll need to reposition and realign capital flows with this, with the dislocations that we're seeing in markets, and that's what will create new and sustainable trending environments. So this this phase we're in at the moment with this dislocation um, and the panic, once that uh, subsides, we'll uh, we'll see then how players have to real uh, reposition or reallocate capital, and that will start and, and potentially um, be the catalyst for. Um, for really furtive trading conditions, so uh, so I'll be walking you through that, like I say, on on Thursdays as uh, as we go ahead now.
and I've put the link in the um, in the chat box for you to register for those um, those sessions. Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here. Thanks very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the education summit the past 12 weeks where we've given you uh, foundations in terms of education, introduced you to how I uh, analyze and, and trade the markets and the tools I use. And like I say, over the, the coming weeks and months, you'll, uh, you'll get a front row seat to, uh, to the realities of that. Thanks very much for your time, guys. I hope this helps.